There were quite a lot of unusual and somewhat unexpected discoveries coming from the James Webb Space Telescope in the last few months. With the strangest one being the discovery of several galaxies really far away from us, many beating previous records by a huge margin and essentially representing the farthest galaxies ever found. Although that part by itself was not unexpected. As a matter of fact, the James Webb was specifically designed to find these galaxies. What was unexpected, and what was really unusual, is the discovery of relatively massive and relatively well-developed galaxies at these very similar locations. For example, the currently farthest galaxy confirmed right now by the James Webb is at the redshift of 13.2. The galaxy that you see right here, and the galaxy that's about 13.6 billion years old, or approximately 33.5 billion light years away from us. And if you're wondering why these numbers don't match, check out one of the videos in the description that explains how the redshift works and how, because of the universe expansion, things are a little bit farther away. Anyway, so this galaxy is the new record holder and once again is maybe a little bit too developed compared to what the scientists predicted. By the way, there's another study that I'm going to be discussing really soon that even proposes that maybe this is not a galaxy but something a little bit more exotic. I don't want to spoil it just yet, but subscribe if you'd like to find out more. That video coming out really soon. And so because of all of these galaxies, it created a bit of a problem because there was no good explanation. As a matter of fact, it created a kind of a tension when it comes to modern theories and even the theory of the Big Bang or just the general theory known as Lambda CDM. Or did it? Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And so today we're going to be discussing this relatively new study and a relatively new analysis, which kind of actually includes several studies, which once and for all confirms that it doesn't seem to be weird. There doesn't seem to be anything strange here. And the previous announcements that some of these galaxies were a little bit too massive and a little bit too developed might have been a little bit premature. In other words, no theory is violated, Big Bang has not been disproven or proven wrong, and these galaxies are technically just maybe a little bit different, but not weird at all. And so let's discuss these details and let's actually start with where these predictions and these initial announcements came from. I mean, even before these galaxies were discovered. And so generally, when it comes to really old galaxies, and specifically the evolution of these ancient galaxies, pretty much all of the modern assumptions are actually based on various simulations and various mathematical predictions, which normally rely on supercomputers to try to recreate some of these galaxies and to essentially try to recreate what we believe might have happened billions of years ago. And though approximately a decade ago, this was actually not very easy to achieve, because of advances in modern computing and because of the overall decrease in prices, it's now actually possible to create relatively accurate models and relatively accurate computer simulations. Not super accurate, but way more accurate than before. And relatively recently there was at least one paper, the one that you can find right here, that essentially tried to look at some of these simulations we usually use to see if these observations from the James Webb were actually violating any of the predictions from some of these simulations. And by the way, in case you're wondering, the biggest simulations are listed here. We have Eagle, Illustrious, TNG100, Simba, Obelisk, Romulus C, and Jade's in this case, represents the observations from the James Webb. And as you can kind of see from this graph, for the most part, things do not really deviate too much. So there is maybe some discrepancy, but the overall alignment is not too different. But there is a problem here. These simulations, such as Illustrious that you see right here, are generally not really sufficient to truly show us what happened early on and to accurately simulate the formation of all of these early galaxies. They are accurate enough for some of the more advanced galaxies, such as the Milky Way, and they are accurate enough to show us the progression for billions of years, but when it comes to really early galaxies, especially 13 to 14 billion years ago, due to the limitations in resolution, things here are just not as accurate as they should be. But it was the results from these simulations and from the analysis produced by various papers that was used as a comparison to all of these discoveries from the James Webb even though it might not work really well with more distant galaxies, especially galaxies at the redshift of 10 or higher, such as many of these galaxies you see right here. Nevertheless, once the announcements were made, quite a lot of naysayers of ideas like the Big Bang Theory, or even the ideas behind dark matter and dark energy, started to use these examples from the James Webb as the proof that, first of all, dark matter, dark energy probably doesn't exist, second of all, Big Bang probably didn't happen either. Now these were really big claims and this was of course something that a lot of scientists were trying to avoid, but titles like this were pretty much everywhere. And unfortunately this didn't really help the situation, especially because this was completely wrong and was never implied from any of the studies. And one of the previous videos from a few months ago goes through a lot of details of why this is completely incorrect. 
The discoveries were still there and the galaxies were still found, and some were a little bit too massive compared to what the scientists expected. And what's interesting is that some of these galaxies even had really high stellar masses or even a lot of star formation, more than the scientists predicted originally. But once again, these predictions, for the most part, were based on somewhat outdated modeling and definitely something that's not very precise and not as accurate as it should be. Although, as you can see from this image again, even these models did not really show us anything unusual. But now we have a new paper that almost definitively proves that nothing weird definitely happened here by essentially analyzing the most detailed model that we currently have. The model known as Renaissance. The simulation that produces an extremely high resolution early universe models showing us how galaxies formed early on and even modeling galaxies as small as 10,000 solar masses or as big as tens of millions of solar masses and doing so with a lot of accuracy and a lot of detail. All of this is done using Blue Water's sustained petascale computing supercomputer at the University of Illinois. And so in this case, the scientists used the Renaissance model, comparing it to six galaxies from the James Webb discoveries with a redshift of 10 or higher, located when the universe was only a few hundred million years old. In the end, showing that all of these massive galaxies seem to be totally consistent with the models from Renaissance, with none of them breaking any rules. As a matter of fact, it seems to be in perfect agreement with models. And that includes models of dark matter, dark energy, and of course the idea of the Big Bang. And because this is the most accurate simulation we have right now, at the moment there's really no suggestion anywhere that for some reason physics were broken or something doesn't add up. But it does show us something. It shows us that some of these simulations we've used previously, such as Illustris project that you see right here, are just not sufficient to fully explain how galaxies formed early on. Which is maybe not the news some people wanted to hear, but it's exactly the news that all of the scientists wanted to hear, because otherwise it would be very difficult to explain things. And more importantly, it doesn't disprove the Big Bang, it doesn't disprove dark matter or dark energy, but does suggest we have to be super careful when using some of the older models and older simulations when trying to explain modern observations or specifically explanations from the James Webb. Or at least that's what we think for now and that's what all of these studies are showing us. We're obviously going to have even more data coming from the James Webb in the next few months and we're obviously going to have better simulations in the next few years. So things might change. At the moment though, as of May of 2023, it doesn't look like anything was broken, it does not look like any of the physical models of the universe are incorrect and it looks like the Big Bang Theory is correct after all, as well as the idea of dark matter. Now maybe that's not what all of you wanted to hear, but those of you who have been on the channel long enough know that I've actually explored alternative ideas to dark matter previously, but in the end none of them really swayed my beliefs enough to make me a true believer. And so the current cosmology model seems to be, at least for now, correct. But we'll have more details once James Webb provides more information. So stay tuned, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, check out previous videos on a similar topic in the description below, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt that does feature James Webb telescope as well in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.